<laughs> okay. We want to welcome all of you, of course, to the service this morning. We especially want to welcome all those who are joining us virtually, and many will be doing that. And so uh, we invite you to, to share with us uh, the Word of God and, uh, and uh, maybe even uh, share it with somebody else. Uh, as, uh, as we get into the service this morning. We're delighted to have Tim Buchanan with us, and we're going to ask him to sing right before the message. So, Tim, God bless you as you sing this morning.
Thank you so much, Tim. That was such a blessing. We trust the folk out there in virtual land got a blessing from that too. I want you to turn in your Bible, please, to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. I've, I've tried to introduce this message a hundred different times in my mind. And uh, it always comes up uh, weak and limited in my own heart, in my own mind. I'm reminded of what it says in the book of Revelation in regards to the Apostle John. It says he was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. And that's what I want to do. I want to be in the Spirit on the Lord's day. I want you to be in the Spirit on the Lord's day. And so as we look into this particular beatitude, I would remind you that it comes from the greatest sermon ever preached. Most of us have heard some mighty fine sermons over the years, maybe even preached them, but they pale, <clears throat> they pale in uh, significance uh, as it relates to the Sermon on the Mount. I noticed that in this particular Sermon on the Mount, there were 29 different issues that Jesus touched on. We're lucky to get on one. And, and we don't often do very well on one. But Jesus touched on, on 29 different issues as he preached to the disciples <coughs> on the mountain that day. <coughs> and it's one of the multitudes. He went up into a high, uh, up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying. A couple of weeks ago, uh, we saw this blessed man poor in the spirit, not poor in, in possessions, not poor in influence, not poor in authority, but poor in spirit, which indicated that, that uh, uh, he, was, he was a hell-bound, lost sinner. And he acknowledged that. Apart from acknowledging that, you can't get into God's kingdom. Jesus said, ye must be born again. Except a man be born again, he cannot enter in or see the kingdom of God. And what Jesus was doing here in this particular sermon was introducing it by these eight Beatitudes. Now, these Beatitudes are not necessarily rules and regulations. They're they're principles of behavior which actually cross all dispensations. Doesn't matter whether it's one dispensation or another, these, dispen these, these parable or these, these principles here apply to our lives. And the first one, of course, was poor in spirit. The one that we're looking at today is, is similar to it. Jesus said, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. I thought to myself, if I had to conduct a seminar where poverty and mourning were the two subjects that I'm dealing with, I don't think I'd get many takers. We, uh, uh, we don't like poverty. 
We don't want to live below the poverty level. Uh, we don't much care for mourning either. We, we, I mean, who wants to feel bad all the time? And yet, and yet, Jesus introduces this entire sermon by, by emphasizing, number one, a man must be poor in spirit in, in order to get into the kingdom and live in the kingdom. And, and secondly, he must, he must be able to, to mourn. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Could I teach you something this morning? Only those who feel have the ability to mourn. Think about it. Only those who feel have the ability to mourn. See, calloused hands and calloused feet and calloused heart can't feel anything. And apart from feeling, we can't mourn. I, I think of, I think of a, a story that I, I saw and I read one time about a, a man from India who, who had leprosy in his feet. He had no feeling whatsoever. None. And somebody accidentally poured a pan of boiling hot water on his feet. And he couldn't feel it. They blistered up, got infected and everything. But he never felt it at all because, because his feet were numb to pain. You see, folk, only those who feel have the ability to mourn. When Paul wrote to the church of Ephesus, In chapter 4, he, he said to them, don't be, like, don't be like other Gentiles. And then he characterized them by saying they were past feeling. Past feeling. So you say, well, what's all this got to do with mourning? Uh, two things. Two things. Number one, you're... Your ability to mourn is connected to your sensitivity of conscience. Our conscience is not to be our guide. The Word of God is our guide. But our conscience, which, is, which has as its standard the Word of God, which is Judeo-Christian ethics, our conscience is either going to be <clears throat> heightened or diminished depending on our conscience. I think of the situation as it is today. The farther the farther we get away from the Judeo-Christian ethics, the farther we get away from the Ten Commandments, the farther we get away from, from the Word of God, the more we're going to be past feeling. People today have no problem butchering little babies. Why? Well, because they're past feeling. They have no problem lying and stealing and cheating and, and cussing and, and swearing and blaspheming God. Why? Because, because they're past feeling. They have no feeling in them. Consequently, they can't mourn. And Jesus said, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. We, we, have, uh, we have come to the stage in our, in our country today 
where the Judeo-Christian ethics is, is no longer being taught. It's no longer being emphasized. We are, we are a multicultural society today where, where anything goes depending on their conscience. And if their conscience has no standard, if their conscience has no, no uh, uh, basis of being, then, then they can do whatever they want to do. I think of uh, I think of the, the Muslim world who sometimes becomes part of our government. They can stand up easily and, 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 and uh, uh, give allegiance to America with their fingers crossed because their allegiance is not to America. Their allegiance is to Allah and the Muhammad thinking. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. Apart from feeling, we can't mourn. And, and mourning is an absolute necessity in order to be part of God's kingdom. You see, that's, that's going to be a uh, an, an essential element of the kingdom to be able to mourn. Now the second thing is, is notice, notice the, the second thing. It says, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be what? Comforted. Now, uh, that's, a, that's a strange commodity, Aaron. Commodity. Uh, we don't mourn... Uh, all the time, and therefore we don't need comfort all the time. But, but there are times when, when, when we will automatically mourn over something and we'll need to be comforted. I, I'd like to remind everybody here today that, that, that when Jesus came into the world, he didn't come and die on a cross to make us feel good about ourselves. He came into the world to make us feel bad about ourselves that we might throw ourselves on the mercy and love of God. And, 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 as, such, and as such, that not only do we mourn, but we can be comforted by, by what what we're mourning about. Now, I'm sure all of us at one time or another have mourned. Many, most of the time we have mourned over, uh, you know, the loss of somebody. And, and, we, and, and, and we comfort others uh, in their mourning. Uh, but, but Jesus isn't talking about the funeral home here. He isn't talking about, about uh, the, the mourning that comes uh, from the loss of something. He, he's talking about the mourning uh, that, that comes from getting rid of something. You see, you see, the mourning that Jesus is talking about has to do with, with our sin. I, I don't know... I don't know if you've ever seen yourself as God sees you. Uh, there's a, there, uh, you know, remember, remember oh, over in Isaiah chapter, chapter 6, it, it says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. And then in verse 5, it says, Then, then, then uh, I said, for I am undone because I am a man of unclean lips. I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the king. When, when Isaiah saw the Lord, he saw himself clearly. Have you ever seen yourself as God sees you? Uh, in... in, uh, in uh, uh, 
Jeremiah. Let me read you something. Let me read you something if I can find it from Jeremiah. By the way, the whole book of Lamentations, the whole book of Lamentations is about mourning, mourning over sin, the sins of the people of Israel. Jeremiah uh, learned how to mourn. Uh, it's in I, I, actually Isaiah 64. If you want to turn in your Bible there, listen, listen to what it says. It says... Uh, it says, but we are all as an unclean thing, and all of our righteousnesses are as filthy rags, and we do all as a, as a, as an, a, a fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. I don't know if you've ever got a glimpse of God's holiness like Isaiah did. Because if you ever did, you'd mourn. Because you'd see yourself as you really are. You know, you've got you to gotta appreciate the fact that, that it, took the, it took the death of the Son of God to cleanse us from the wickedness of our sin. That's how bad it was. That's how wicked we are. Uh, we don't like to admit the fact that we're a hell-bound, wicked sinners uh, in need of a Savior. We don't want to admit that. But yet without admitting it, we can't get into God's heaven. People have a rough time admitting their sinfulness. And yet without it, we can't get into His heaven. I don't know if I can explain this any different. I got saved when I was 17. I graduated from high school the next year and a bunch of us went up to Buffalo, New York to work in the Ford stamping plant. Now remember, when I got saved, I, I, I got saved all the way through and he cleaned up my mouth. That's the most important thing. He cleaned up my mouth. He cleaned up my heart. But he cleaned up my conscience. But he cleaned up my mouth. And uh, uh, we were working the second shift from 4 to 12. And then afterwards we would go down to uh, Lake Erie and go swimming. We'd put the car lights on the lake and, and uh, we'd s swim for an hour or so. And then we'd go home and, and go to bed. Well, I remember one time particularly uh, as we were uh, driving towards the lake. I was sitting in the middle of the front seat. It was as if it was yesterday. And the guys were talking and, and they were cussing and swearing and all that kind of stuff. And, and, and inadvertently I took the name of Christ in vain and I wanted to die I had never I had never done that one time since I'd gotten saved and have never done it since but I took God's name in vain and I couldn't wait I couldn't wait to get out of that car and find some lonely place where I could get on my face before God and plead the blood and ask him to forgive me. And as I did that, God just absolutely overwhelmed me with his comfort. You see, you see, apart apart from feeling. You can't mourn. And when you really, really mourn, God is going to comfort you. Regardless of how wicked your sin might be. If it's under the blood. Uh, when I uh, was out there on the sand, uh, on my knees before God and pleading the blood, uh, I... I learned the truth of 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins 
and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And God cleaned up my heart and I mourned and he comforted me. Some years ago, I had the privilege of preaching at Pensacola. And uh, I preached a message that I've preached here uh, on, on, on the law of unintended consequences. And, and I made it clear to all of these young people, and there was about four to 5,000 young people there, along with faculties and so on. And I made it clear to them that, that, uh, that, uh, that we still have our old nature, and our old nature has a bent towards wickedness and sin. And although we have no intentions of, 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 of our lives going in one direction or another in, 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 in a sinful way. We have no intentions of that happening, yet, yet because we in, inadvertently uh, take a wrong turn, we are off in that direction. The law of unintended consequences takes place. After I preached it, I turned to Dr. Horton and asked him if I could give an invitation, and he told me yes, and so I, I gave an invitation, and hundreds of boys and girls, teenagers, college students came forward, got their hearts right with God. One fellow, though, one fellow waited until everybody was gone, and he came up to me and said, Pastor Huffan, could I talk with you? And I said, sure. He said, not here. I said, well, where? And so he took me out in the middle of the auditorium where no one could hear anything but he and I. And he, he put me in confidence. We've got to be careful about that kind of stuff, David. He put me in confidence and, and then proceeded to tell me the most sordid, immoral story I've ever heard. Particularly from a college student, a, a senior no less. And as he told me that, he began to weep and his eyes were filled with tears and, and he continued to tell me the story, how many others were involved in it too, right there on campus. And he said to me, he said, Pastor, I can't live any longer this way. I've got to I've got to get rid of my sin. And so we bowed our heads right there. And he poured out his heart to God. And God comforted him. See, that's, that's what he's talking about here. He's not talking about comforting others. He's not talking about mourning uh, as it relates to some loss. He's talking, about, he's talking about mourning over our sin. How many times have I seen people walk the aisle with a smile on their face when they think that they're going to get rid of their sin? And I want to send them back to their seat. Uh, listen, folk, when, if you ever see yourself as God sees you, there'll be no joy in Mudville. There'll be no sunshine in your soul. There'll be no smile on your face as you, as you walk down the aisle to get your heart right with God. 
no smile, no joy, until your heart's cleansed by the blood of Christ. Only then can your heart be comforted. Not until. Remember, remember, only those who feel have the ability to mourn. And if you're past feeling, then you can't mourn. And if you can't mourn, then you can't be part of God's kingdom. But as we see ourselves as God sees us, like Isaiah saw himself as he saw the Lord, woe is me, for I am undone. When we, that's, when we see that happen in our life, then God can comfort us. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Let's pray together. Father, we want to thank you today for Jesus. We thank you for the opportunity to, to uh, speak concerning this, this beatitude. Forgive us, Father, wherein we have failed. But Father, uh, uh, help us to realize how important it is to get rid of sin in our life, regardless of how little it might be. For it can grow. It can get bigger. And it must be confessed. And it must be we must get comfort from you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's stand as we sing softly.